हेलो स्टूडेंट्स माई सेल्फ प्रोफेसर गणेश गोरख नाइक आई एम टीचिंग इन पी एस कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग सिंस टू थाउजेंड ट्वेल्व वेलकम टू द वीडियो लेक्चर सीरीज ऑफ द सब्जेक्ट हिट ट्रांसफर सो टुडे वी आर स्टार्टिंग आवर फर्स्ट लेक्चर ऑन द सब्जेक्ट हिट ट्रांसफर इन दैट वी विल सी फर्स्ट इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ द हिट ट्रांसफर सो इन दिस After completion of the lecture, learners will be able to understand overall content of heat transfer, understand different experiments to be conducted, understand difference between heat transfer and thermodynamics, understand different modes of heat transfer, identify different modes of heat transfer, and understand different laws which governs the modes of heat transfer. So let us see one by one. Now the content. of the subject are as follows this particular subject is for total 150 marks out of that 100 marks will be for theory that is in that again that 100 marks are divided in uh, following manner continuous assessment 20 marks mid semester examination 20 marks end semester examination 60 marks and 50 marks for practical and these are the outcomes six outcomes that will be achieved after completion of the subject now let us see the uh, particular contents of this particular subject first unit is introduction second unit is overall heat transfer coefficient and extended surface in that we have to see steady state and unsteady state Unit number three is on the convection, that is principles of convection. Unit number four is force convection. Unit number five is boiling and condensation. In that we have to see again introduction to mass transfer and heat exchangers. In unit number five itself, in unit number six we have to see the radiation heat transfer. So basically, if you observe this contents, these are uh, different modes of heat transfer. First two units are on conduction. Next two units are on convection. Uh, sorry, next three, that is unit number three, unit number four, and unit number five are on convection and mix uh, mix conduction, and unit number six is on radiation. So now, the reference books you can refer for this particular subject as follows: textbooks F P in Cropera, D P David. fundamentals of heat and mass transfer you can use this this is also very good book and uh, second sp sukhatme also very good book for this particular subject and if you want to go in the details of the heat transfer and you have to study in the application manner then you go through the y a singel heat transfer a practical approach that is of tata uh, tata magrohill publications okay so these are the different contents and basic information now in experiments what we have to do in experiments there are different experiment that we have to perform okay so the uh, these are as follows first determination of thermal conductivity of metal rod any one metal rod will be given to you and uh, you have to find the thermal conductivity of that particular given metal rod after that determination of thermal conductivity of the insulating powder any unknown insulating powder will be given and we have to find out the thermal conductivity by using experiment third determination of conductivity of a composite slab thermal conductivity of next fourth is uh, temperature distribution on a fin surfaces how to calculate the temperature at different locations on the fin that is the experiment number 4 Experiment number five: Determination of the film co heat co heat transfer coefficient for natural convection, and sixth is for force convection. Okay. Next seventh experiment we have to perform in the laboratory as determination of heat transfer coefficient for cylinder in cross flow in cross flow in forced convection. Experiment number eight: Performance of double pipe heat exchanger or shell and tube type heat exchanger. next determination of stefan boltzmann constant next 11th is determination of critical heat flux and 12th is cal uh, calibration of the measuring instruments pressure gauge thermocouple flow meter etc 
Yes, these are the different experiments that we have to perform in the laboratory. Next, let now let us pause the video and uh, try to think on this. What is the difference between heat transfer and thermodynamics? What do you think? So let us pause the video and try to think on this. Okay, I hope you have think on this. What is difference between heat transfer and thermodynamics? So let us see what is difference. So thermodynamics and heat transfer. In thermodynamics, thermodynamics deals with the equilibrium states of matter. and heat transfer deals with the non equilibrium states of the matter that is temperature gradient must exist for exchange of heat to take place next difference is thermodynamics tells us final state of the system and heat transfer tells us temperature distribution inside the body now let us discuss this in detail now what is in thermodynamics thermodynamics and heat transfer so suppose there is one body and in heat transfer is also let us consider same body now thermodynamics tells that if this particular body is in equilibrium if this body is in equilibrium the temperature of this particular body at each and every location is t according to thermodynamics but according to heat tra uh, heat transfer if the temperature of this body is t that means actually if the heat transfer takes place in particular this body then what happens the temperature at each and every point on this particular body or at different points on this particular body the temperature will be different at different locations and this is not given by the this is not given by the thermodynamics this is given by the heat transfer okay so this we have to remember <coughs> that is temperature distribution inside the body is not given by thermodynamics the temperature distribution inside the body is given by the heat transfer so this is the main point that you have to remember next it tells us how much work is done it tells us at what rate that work is done okay next difference is it describes how much heat is to be exchanged during a process but does not hint how the same could be achieved that means in thermodynamics whatever heat is transferred let us consider whatever heat is transferred that is denoted by q dot or q this is the amount of heat transferred but by what mode by what which means that heat is transferred that is not given by thermodynamics but in heat transfer that is q1 that means uh, what is the rate of heat transfer and also by which mode that heat is transferred from one location to another location that is also given in the heat transfer okay so this these are the two uh, four differences between thermodynamics and heat transfer i hope you have understand this now let us see the different laws of heat transfer uh, which are required basic laws or the fundamental laws which are helpful to understand the heat transfer more detail now as already we have studied in thermodynamics first law of thermodynamics it is nothing but it is also known as conservation of energy principle as you know it states that energy can neither be created nor be destroyed but it can only be converted from one form to another form and in general we can write this as energy in minus energy out is equal to change in total energy so this can be written as total energy entering the system minus total energy leaving the system that must be equal to change in the total energy of the system so let us consider these are the different energies which are entering the system and these are the energies which are leaving the system so in general energy in is equal to energy out we can say that according to first law of thermodynamics now to understand in more detail first law of thermodynamics let us discuss one example now let us take the example of heating of water in an ele uh, electric teapot so let us consider this is a teapot electric teapot very simple question uh, let us read the question first 1.2 kg of liquid water initially at 15 degree celsius is to be heated 
to 95 degree Celsius in a tea pot. That means what we have to do? There is uh, water initially at a temperature of 15 degree Celsius. 1.2 kg of water is given there, mass is given. And what we have to do? We have to heat it up to 95 degree Celsius. Okay. Uh, with the help of 1200 watt electric heating element inside. Okay. 1200 watt electric heating element is given inside this particular teapot and we have to increase the temperature of the water from 15 degree Celsius to 95 degree Celsius. Now the question says that the teapot is 0 0.5 kg, the weight of the teapot is given 0 0.5 kg and has an average specific heat of 0 0.7 kJ per kg degree Celsius. Taking the specific heat of water to be 4.18 kJ per kg degree Celsius and uh, disregarding any heat loss from the teapot determine how long it will take for the water to be heated. So what we have to calculate here? How much time is required to reach the water from 15 degree Celsius to 95 degree Celsius? This is the question and here there are some assumptions we have to neglect the heat losses. So let us try to find out what how much time is required to reach the water from 15 degree Celsius to 95 degree Celsius. So uh, what are the assumptions here mentioned in the question itself? Heat loss from the teapot is negligible and second constant properties can be used for both teapot and water. Whatever specific heats are given here 4.18 and 0 0.7 these are constant throughout the process we have to assume this. Now what are the properties? These are the properties uh, 0 0.7 kJ per kg degree Celsius is for teapot and 4.18 kJ per kg degree Celsius is for water. Now in analysis we take the teapot and water in it as the system which is a closed system that is fixed mass. Now here what is the energy balance equation? Energy balance equation is we can write here energy in minus energy out is equal to delta E system that is this is the first law of thermodynamics. Now energy in can be written as delta U that is change in uh, internal energy of the system that is nothing but change in internal energy of the water plus change in internal energy of the teapot. Now then the amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of water and the teapot from 15 degree Celsius to 95 degree Celsius. Let us calculate this first. So this can be calculated as this delta U for water can be written as MCP delta T water, MCP delta T teapot. Now M is given, C is given, delta T is given, put the values and you will get the value of energy in that is 429.3 kJ. Now it is mentioned in the question that 1200 watt electric heating uh, unit will supply energy at the rate of 1.2 kW or 1.2 kJ per second. Therefore, the time needed for this heat heater to supply 429.3 kJ of heat is determined from this equation delta T is equal to total energy transfer upon rate of energy transfer that is nothing but energy in upon energy transfer that is nothing but 429.3 kJ upon 1.2 kJ per second and this will give you 358 seconds or in minute we can write that is 6 minutes. This is the time required to reach the temperature of the water from 50 degree, 15 degree Celsius to the 95 degree Celsius. Okay. So I hope you understand this question. Now let, let us again discuss another question regarding the losses in the heating ducts in a basement. Okay. This is one example, practical example. Now let us consider a uh, 5 meter long section of air heating system of a house passes through an unheated space in basement. The cross section of the rectangular duct of the heating system is 20 centimeter by 25 centimeter. 20 centimeter by 20 by 25 centimeter that is given. Hot air enters the duct at 100 kilo Pascal and 60 degree Celsius at an average velocity of 5 meter per second. The temperature of the air in the duct drops to 54 degree Celsius as a result of heat loss to the cool space in the basement. Okay. So what is happening here? 
the temperature is dropped from 60 degree celsius to 54 degree celsius so definitely there is heat loss so now we have to calculate that heat loss how much heat is lost from that particular basement uh, through the duct now determine the heat uh, rate of heat loss from the air in the duct to the basement under steady conditions also determine the cost of this heat loss per hour if the house is heated by natural gas furnace that has an efficiency of 80% and cost of the natural gas in the area is uh, 0.60 per therm billion dollar sorry dollar not billion one therm is equal to 1 lakh british thermal unit and that is nothing but 1 lakh 5500 kilo joule okay so this is the question given now let us try to solve this question now here again assumptions we have to made the steady operating conditions exist air can be treated as an ideal gas with constant properties at room temperature now the properties from this particular table we can calculate these properties as uh, the constant pressure specific heat of air at the average temperature that is 54 plus 60 divided by 2 uh that is equal to 57 degree celsius okay so at 57 degree celsius from this chart okay we have calculated the value of 1.007 kJ per kg degree celsius analysis we can we take the basement section of the heating system as our system which is a steady steady flow system the rate of heat loss from the air in the duct can be determined from this particular equation so q is equal to mcp delta t this is the equation to calculate the amount of heat now here m dot is the mass flow rate and delta t is the temperature drop the density of air at the inlet conditions can be calculated by using this formula rho is equal to p upon rt this is taken from pv is equal to mrt okay so from this equation we can calculate the value of density because this v can be written as 1 by rho okay so from that you will get this value p rho is equal to p upon rt if m is equal to 1 so from that you will get the value 1.046 kg per meter cube this is the density of air now the cross sectional area of the duct is rectangular so the area will be 0.05 meter square now the then the mass flow rate through the duct can, uh, and the rate of heat loss can be calculated as first let us see the mass flow rate so mass flow rate is equal to rho into v into ac as you know this so density we have calculated area also we know and velocity is given in the question so from that you will get the value of mass flow through the duct and what is the q loss now the q loss is equal to m into cp into t in minus t out and from that you will get the heat loss that is 1.5 580 kilo joule per second so for every second 1.580 kilo joule of heat is lost from the duct okay now what is the cost associated with this particular loss okay so this 1.580 kilo joule per second can be written in kilo joule per hour as 5688 kilo joule per hour and the cost associated with this is cost of the heat loss is equal to rate of heat loss divided by unit cost of energy input divided by furnace efficiency that is also given so by using if you solve this you will get the value as 0.040 per hour okay 0.040 dollar per hour so for every hour for every hour this much amount of cost is required to the owner of that particular home now what is the discussion here the heat loss from the heating ducts in the basement is costing the home owner 4 cent 4 cents per hour assuming the heater operates 200 hours during a heating season if you consider 200 hours during the heating season then the annual cost of that particular heat loss will be 80 dollars per annual okay in one year most of this money money can be saved by insulating the heating ducts in the unheated areas so what is the option for this heat uh, to avoid the cost so we can provide the insulation on the duct 
to avoid this particular heat losses so this is the important question that we have already considered see now let us pause the video pause the video and think on this particular question what is the question what is heat transfer and write different application areas of the heat transfer now up till now we have studied what are the different basic uh, 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 requirements for the study of heat transfer subject now let us start with the actual uh, subject that is heat transfer and uh, try to think on this particular question so i hope you have done this now let us see application area first now this is human body this human body acts as a good example of heat transfer so we wear the clothes why we wear the clothes in the we wear uh, different types of clothes in winter season we wear the different types of clothes in summer season why it is so because the temperature conditions or the different temperature gradients in different uh, seasons are different and accordingly we have to wear the clothes in winter season we wear the clothes which are having high insulating uh, insulating thermal conductivity okay or and in summer season what we wear the different types of clothes okay to avoid the heat losses from body uh, from atmosphere to body and in winter season we wear the different clothes because we do not want to lose heat from our body to the atmosphere okay so these are the different application areas first that is human body second let us consider air conditioning system so in air conditioning system also there are many applications of the heat transfer if you see the next application of car radiator in car radiator also there are many more heat transfer takes place in this particular car radiators so okay we will see in this particular uh, details in the heat exchanger chapters next circuit boards in electric circuit boards also there are different uh, ic's which are get heated and we have to cool that ic's at particular time at at spe particular specific time okay for uh, to avoid the harm to the ic's now in power plants there are many heat transfer processes takes place in condenser in evaporators okay in boiler okay there are different heat transfer processes takes place and if you have to do the analysis of this particular power plants then the knowledge of heat transfer is very much essential in the refrigeration system is also knowledge of heat transfer required so these are the different application areas some of the application areas i have taken for your reference now let us discuss what is heat transfer now it is the branch of science which deals with the study of different ways or the modes and estimation of the rate of such energy in transit the basic condition for the heat transfer is temperature gradient unless and until there is a temperature gradient heat cannot be transferred from one body to another body or from one part to another part of same body now already we have seen as applications in automobile sector in aeronautics fluid mechanics chemical industries computer engineering process industries power plants electronics day by day day to day lives okay in there are many many more applications of the heat transfer subject now let us see the modes of heat transfer now basically there are three modes of heat transfer first is conduction second is convection and third is radiation now let us see what is mean by conduction so what is conduction let us consider a rod if this rod is heated at one end what will happen if the rod is heated at one end what will happen the this end get put, uh, heated first if suppose this is end a and this is end b and after some time what happens this end b is also get heated now whatever heat is transferred from this particular part to this particular part this is due to conduction this is due to conduction so how you can define the conduction or suppose there are two bodies body one body two the which are in physical contact with each other what will happen if suppose temperature of body one is greater than temperature of body the heat will transfer from body one to body two okay so now we can define the conduction as it is the mode of heat transfer in which heat is transferred from one part to another part of 
same substance from one part to another part of same substance like in example number one from one body to another body which are in physical contact with each other example number two without movement of molecules without appreciable movement of the molecules so this term is very important here that is known as conduction so while defining the conduction you should be able to uh, write these particular three po three points in that definition first he, it uh, conduction is the mode of heat transfer in which heat is transferred from one part to another part of same substance from or from one body to another body which are in physical contact with each other and third without appreciable movement of the molecule that is known as conduction now in this case medium is required unless there is medium it is not possible it is a microscope microscopic phenomenon that means we cannot see the transfer of heat energy from one part to another part we cannot see it by naked eyes okay this is at the microscopic level uh, mechanism and that's why this is known as microscopic phenomenon okay i hope you understand this now let us study the next that is convection now what happens in the convection let us discuss this in detail now let us consider a vessel containing water okay water is there in the vessel and if you heat this vessel from the bottom what will happen the base will get heated first and after that the whatever liquid is in contact or that uh, water is in contact with that hot surface that water get heating and whatever molecules molecules are present at the bottom that molecules get heated first and due to heat gain by that molecule the density will drop density will decrease and as soon as density will decrease this molecule will try to move in the upward direction and whatever molecule is present at the top that that is having high density and this high density molecule will move in the downward direction so there is continuous motion, uh, motion of the molecules from one part to another part in this particular convection okay so how you can define the convection now convection can be defined as like this convection it is the mode of heat transfer in which it is the mode of heat transfer in which it is the mode of heat transfer in which heat is transferred from one body to another body which are in physical contact or apart from each other we can say that no matter and or we can uh, also define as heat transfer takes place from hot surface to the surrounding fluid with an actual movement of the molecules so here there is actual movement of the molecules takes place in conduction there was no actual movement of the molecules but here we can say that there is actual movement of the molecules from one part to another part okay and here also medium is required without medium this is not possible and it is a macroscopic phenomenon that means we can see the transfer of molecules by our naked eyes that's why this is a macroscopic phenomenon now let us discuss the radi radiation third mode of heat transfer now here in this particular case what happens heat is transferred from one body to another body by means other than conduction and convection in this con conduction and convection whatever modes are there whatever mechanisms are there by other modes or by other mechanisms that if heat is transferred from one body to another body that is due to the radiation so in radiation what happens the heat is transferred from one body to another body in the form of electromagnetic waves which are the ca uh, carriers of the heat transfer so in, the, in this case if there is a medium it is okay but if there is not medium then also it is okay so in radiation medium does not required it is a macro, it is again a microscopic phenomenon okay this is again a microscopic phenomenon now let us discuss what are the different mechanisms of modes of heat transfer now first is conduction now in conduction what happens whatever heat is transferred from one part to another part of the same substance or from one body to another body that is due to two mechanisms first is lattice vibration and second is free electrons first is lattice vibration and second is free electrons now what is my lattice vibration now what happens whenever 
we hit at the one end what happens whatever molecules are present at that particular point or that end that molecules get vibrated about its axis about its axis that vibration is known as lattice vibration the molecules which move up and down okay about an axis that is known as lattice vibration okay that is vibration of electron is about a about its axis and what is next free electrons in free electrons in generally in metals large amount of free electrons are available and whenever the heat is gained by that uh, electrons the excitement excitement of that electrons get increased and the bonding between two electrons get break and that electrons are free to move from one part to another part and along with that movement they transfer heat from one part to another part okay and in lattice vibration what happens whenever there is a vibration what happens one molecule get collided on another molecule and in this way heat is transferred from one molecule to another molecule okay and in this way heat is transferred from one part to another part but without actual movement of the molecules remember this so this is the mechanism of conduction now let us see the mechanism of convection now in convection what happens this convection takes place mainly due to the density difference okay again this convection there are two types first is natural and second is forced in natural convection the heat is transferred due to density difference but in forced convection we use some external device to force the uh, heat transfer okay along that particular fluid so here density difference and when temperature of the molecule decreases increases the density decreases okay this concept already we have discussed now in radiation what happens in radiation the main heat transfer carriers are electromagnetic waves Gen first what happens generation of the waves takes place second transmission of the waves and third is incidence of the waves on that particular another body so if you consider the uh, radiation mechanism if suppose this is body 1 and this is body 2 first generation of the waves takes place this is generation of the waves from one body if suppose this is a body at temperature t1 and this is at t2 t1 is greater than t2 then what will happen the waves electromagnetic waves will be generated at body 1 similarly electromagnetic waves are also generated at the body 2 okay as well and these waves are transported from the, through the space and after that these radiations are injected or incident on the body 2 and in this way heat is transferred along with that electromagnetic waves from one body to another body so there are three mechanisms first is generation first is generation second is transportation and third is incidence okay incidence of the waves on the next body and in this way heat is transferred from one body to another body now let us see some examples of the modes of heat transfer so examples of conduction some are, some of the examples are given heat transferred from in the metal rod from one end to another end that is good example of conduction heat transfer in walls of vessel when it is heated from bottom okay heat transfer in vessels uh, walls of the vessels that is conduction next next example uh, sorry next mode is convection examples are heat transfer from hot surface plate to the air kept in atmosphere okay heat transfer from plate to the through the air if suppose this is the plate and whatever air is flowing through this particular over the uh, plate what will happen heat transfer will take place from this plate towards the atmospheric air that is due to convection next boiling of water okay that is good example boiling of water next heat transfer from horizontal tube surfaces to the water flowing through the uh, through it in the boilers okay you have seen the cochran boiler lancashire boiler so whatever exhaust gases are passing through this particular tubes that hot uh, the heat is transferred from this hot gases towards the water which is surrounding to this particular fluid this is also example of convection okay next is example uh, examples of radiation so Uh, heat transfer in chilies from sunlight clothes kept for drying in the sunlight 
one can feel warmth of sun in the sunlight so these are the examples of radiation right now let us discuss now let us pause the video and uh, try to identify the modes of heat transfer for the uh, given figure so what is this mode of heat transfer which is this mode of heat transfer and which is this mode of heat transfer okay so i think you have done it now let us see so this is the conduction because heat is transferred from one end to the another end okay that is due to the conduction now this is heat transfer due to, uh, in the in the in presence of air okay so heat is transferred from this surface through the air and that is filled by this particular hands that is due to convection now here there is no air there is no air this is far away from this particular fire this particular man is far away far away but also even though that particular uh, hands get feel the warmth of this fire and that is due to radiation without any medium okay so i hope this you have identified modes of heat transfer correctly now let us see the laws governing the modes of heat transfer now first for conduction now for conduction there is one law that is known as fourier's law of heat conduction for convection there is law which is known as newton's law of cooling and for radiation there is law which is known as stefan boltzmann's law so let us see one by one so first is fourier's law fourier's law of heat conduction now this fourier's law of heat conduction states that amount of heat transfer is directly proportional to the area normal to the direction of heat flow and temperature gradient and temperature gradient so this area is the if suppose this is the body and if you have to calculate the heat transfer okay then the area normal to the direction of heat flow is this area okay we have to take this area and dt by dx is the temperature gradient okay this is dx and the temperature at on the inner surface is t1 suppose and temperature on the outer, outer surface is t2 okay so according to fourier's law rate of heat transfer is directly proportional to area normal to the direction of the heat flow and uh, temperature gradient so if you remove the proportionality, proportionality sign then this can be written as q dot is equal to minus k okay let us let me write this clearly so minus k into a into dt by dx so this is the fourier's law of heat conduction now why this negative sign is incorporated in this fourier's law because negative sign is there because the temp the heat is transferred from higher temperature to lower temperature first thing okay that is heat is transferred towards the decreasing order so heat is always positive but here this dt by dx is nothing but your t2 minus t1 upon dx but t2 minus t1 this t2 is minimum and t1 is maximum so this will be negative this dt by dx will be negative and if this is negative and if you do not add here negative sign then what will happen the rate of heat transfer will be negative but it is against the fundamental law which is fundamental law heat is transferred from higher temperature to lower temperature to yahan pe to yahan pe to barabar aaya tha but okay to show this or to compensate this particular thing here what we have to do we have to add this negative sign so that what will happen this dt by dx is negative and this negative this negative negative will get positive and that's why the rate of heat transfer you will get as positive now here one term is there that is k so what is that k k is nothing but thermal conductivity so we will discuss in detail this thermal conductivity in the next lecture okay now let us see the next law that is for convection okay that is newton's law of cooling second law is newton's law of cooling newton's law of cooling so what is newton's law of cooling rate of heat transfer is directly proportional to the surface area and temperature difference not gradient here in this case there is no gradient here is only temperature difference that is delta t so if you remove the proportionality sign then we can write this as q is equal to h into a into delta t or this can be written as h into a into temperature of the surface minus temperature of the fluid 
Okay, temperature of the fluid here we can write temperature of the fluid. So this is Q dot. Okay, I hope you understand this thing. Q dot is equal to H into A into T S minus T F. So what is T S? Surface temperature and T F is fluid temperature. Okay, I hope you got it. Now let us see the radiation. That is Stephen Boltzmann law. Stephen Boltzmann law. Stephen Boltzmann law. Okay. So what is this Stephen Boltzmann law? Emissivity, that is rare, uh, amount of heat. Oh, sorry, rate of heat transfer is directly proportional to the area and fourth power of the fourth power of its absolute temperature. If suppose this is a body, okay, then rate of heat transfer is directly proportional to the area that is there and fourth power of its absolute temperature. So here we have to write this T that is absolute. So this T must be in Kelvin. Okay. So if you remove the proportionality sign, then we can write this as this is nothing but sigma into emissivity. Okay. Or we can say that factor. You can write here one factor that is F into T raised to 4. Okay. So what is this sigma? Sigma is nothing but Stephen Boltzmann constant. Stephen Boltzmann constant. And what is the value of Stephen Boltzmann constant? That is equal to 5.67 into 10 raised to minus 8 watt per meter square Kelvin raised to 4. Okay. And what is this F? F is the geometric factor. Okay. Which depends on the area, geometrical area of the given body. Okay. So, summary. In summary, <coughs> What you have taught, what you have studied here, we have studied what you mean by heat transfer and application areas. Okay, application areas. Next, we have studied different modes of heat transfer, modes of heat transfer. After that, different mechanisms of modes of heat transfer, mechanisms of modes of heat transfer. After that, we have studied, okay, here modes and examples already we have studied. After that, we have studied different laws governing laws governing modes of heat transfer. Modes of heat transfer. So, in that first law for conduction, that is Fourier's law of heat conduction. Second, for convection, Newton's law of cooling, and third, Stephen Boltzmann law for radiation. Okay, I hope you have understood this. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. I hope you have understand all the things, and come uh, very far, very soon the next video will be uploaded. Thank you very much.